Hi, Clarissa here, psychologist, psychotherapist, and director of Calm Mind Psychology. So today we're going to talk about narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. The primary characteristic of narcissism is that one believes they are far better than anyone else and that they are not at fault for anything. They seldom present for diagnosis. Narcissistic personality disorder relies on several criteria that need to be pervasive and present throughout life. And as I mentioned, I'm just not going to focus on that too much because it means that somebody actually has had to come into a psychologist or a psychiatrist and said, this is um, what an asshole I am. This is how I behave. This is how badly I treat other people. And that would involve taking a modicum of self-responsibility. The, the grandiosity, the delusion or the illusion of grandiosity that's present in narcissists inhibits that humility that you would have to have to say, I was wrong. Narcissists are seldom wrong. And if they do accept wrongness or responsibility or any kind of blame, it will usually be instrumental in their manipulation of getting more of what they want. It will never be a genuine expression of guilt or shame because the narcissist actually has a high amount of shame. There is a high amount of what we call narcissistic injury because they actually have very low self-esteem underneath the shell of grandiosity. They actually are defending against a deep wounding. But having said that, it's not even appropriate sometimes to feel only you feel sympathy for people, but to make allowances for that um, simply enables further behavior. So sympathy from people who are empathic and they say, oh, so that narcissistic person that just was super rude and climbed over people to get the raise and lied about their talents and promotes themselves all the time and talks about themselves endlessly, Oh, they're really suffering from not feeling good about themselves. Don't feel that you need to somehow make that better. People with true narcissism will not want to be helped. They cannot be helped. If it's ingrained in the personality, it's very, 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 very difficult to undo. It's not impossible. So if a person says, oh my Lord, they have what's called a mortification moment where they're faced with the reality of their own destructiveness and how badly they've treated people, which would require that they have a healthy dose of empathy for the other people that they may have destroyed um, or hurt or betrayed or um, used throughout their life. Um, and one of the defining features of narcissism is a lack of true empathy for other people. Now, there is a sense that other people do might have feelings. There might be um, threads of, of understanding how another person may feel. That information can also be used um, for, for exploitation purposes. So it's not the kind of empathy that an empathic person feels. When you are an empathic person, you focus your life on being in um, harmonious relationships with others so that you feel good, so that they feel good, so it's win-win, so that um, you are caring about what other people in the world or other people in your environment or within your relationships you're caring about how they feel, you're caring about their future, you're caring about their well-being because you can put yourself in their shoes and understand how it would feel if you were treated badly, let down, lied to. Someone with narcissism, a narcissist, doesn't put themselves in other people's shoes because their needs are greater. So it's kind of like, even if you're empathic and you have a lot of needs, you can um, sense that other people have needs too. A narcissist doesn't really care that other people have needs. Um, they don't get it. They don't have the ability to put themselves in another person's shoes, in another person's life situation. Um, it's, it's a lack of being able to have mind sight 
into and mind sight means actually feeling sight as well so it's not i see what you're thinking that's a kind of a cognitive empathy it's kind of like i kind of understand how that might be bad but there's also a feeling component an emotional component you can actually feel how that might be bad you can actually have um you know extreme empathy would be where you actually feel in your own body you know someone else's pain or grief or suffering like it actually really bothers you um and then there's you know levels of empathy in between where it's kind of like oh no that can't happen people can't suffer people can't you know that's bad that they were hurt that they were insulted like that you understand you care like it's a normal social way of being our, our whole humanity relies on this yet we have a culture that encourages people to be ruthless to to put other people down so that they make themselves be feel better so that lack of empathy is a very defining feature when you're looking at narcissism because the, the boundary is here like it's my needs it's my way or the highway it's all about me and so in this way other people in relationship with them are more like objects they're not really real people with thoughts feelings needs desires and wants they are um, pawns in a game they're like they reflect the narcissistic person back to themselves it's kind of like my beautiful wife my beautiful children my fantastic house my boat my car you know there's a sense of pride maybe in that person and how they look and and their value but there's no real concern for their suffering how they might feel what they might want what they might need you know and that can extend extend to the children too oh no i'll do that because i can show up and look great that i'm taking my kids to a sporting event but then if my children are struggling and suffering with some some mental health issue that's that's not happening that's not real at all how could they possibly have a mental health issue when they have a wonderful parent like me so there's a grandiosity that doesn't um that isn't realistic there's often grandiose plans so it might not be even grandiosity in the moment it's like what i will be what i can be um or there can be also what i could have been if other people hadn't got in my way i could have been magnificent um like a mother could do this a narcissistic mother could say i would have been um famous or i could have been so successful if it weren't for my children getting in the way and i had to look after them and you know there's a blame to other people and there's no responsibility taken by the narcissistic person so you'll know um, after a while that somebody is not taking responsibility for what they do narcissists do a lot of i'm um, lying they make up stories they say things and then forget that they've said them you know they make plans for the future it's called future faking and they make these these magnificent plans of how things are going to be great how if you just keep hanging in there this is going to happen it's going to be magnificent but it never happens it's always in the future you never actually get satisfied by that actually coming to fruition and then if you challenge the narcissist they get upset they get incensed you are suddenly taking the blame and feeling responsible for even challenging them that this thing hasn't happened yet so you can end up feeling quite um, that you are a little bit crazy when you've been in a relationship with a narcissist. Um, you will take a far more portion of blame and um, emotional punishment that you wouldn't normally take in a relationship that's reciprocal. If you are in a relationship with a narcissist, it can be very confusing. Um, if you've been in one, you may need to have a recovery process. There can be an element of a kind of a PTSD, a post-traumatic stress disorder following a relationship with a narcissist. They can be quite abusive and aggressive. Um, they can be very damaging. When they are done with you, they can um, cut off directly or malignant narcissists can make it their life's work to make you suffer and pay for what you did to upset them. That they didn't like um, again because they simply do not care about another person they don't care about the effects on the children they don't care about the effects on your life and mental health if anything they feel righteously justified in going after another person to make 
them pay or suffer for what they did wrong to the narcissist. So it's really, they do leave quite a trail of destruction. Someone who's truly narcissistic, who lacks empathy, who believes that they, enti they are entitled to special treatment above everybody else, that they are greater than and that nobody should challenge them in this. Um, people who have been brought up by a narcissistic parent have particular problems because then they were raised in a household where somehow they had to adapt to this kind of crazy making behavior that as an adult, you might be able to come out of a relationship and go, wow, that was so wrong. I got none of my needs met. It was all about them. I am struggling with how I fell for it. If you grew up with a narcissistic parent, you didn't have the ability to actually step aside and go, this is wrong, something's wrong here. You were probably conditioned to believe that it was your fault, that you were the one who was wrong and crazy, that you were somehow responsible for what was happening. Um, you may learn codependent behaviors where you had to, um, it's called enabling. It's not that you consciously did it, but there was a, a structure set up around placating the narcissist, not upsetting them, not stimulating their rage because there is a thing called narcissistic rage where you step on the toes of the narcissist, you dare to cross them, you dare to say that they could be wrong, um, that they might have made a mistake and they get angry, they get inflamed. A narcissist is basically a giant two-year-old. They are basically believe like a toddler is like, yeah, I am great. I can do anything. I'm going to run over here and pull this thing down. And the parent will come along and go, no, naughty. You know, you made a mess. And the toddler will go, yeah, and they'll have a big tantrum. You know, I didn't make, I just pulled it down. It's a very similar dynamic in a growing up narcissist. They believe that they are fantastic, that they are grandiose, that they can do anything and they don't have a sense of any personal responsibility for what they've done. And they don't have a sense of even a reality in the fact that other people have got feelings that maybe they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. So I hope I helped you understand a very broad brushstroke around narcissism and, and how you may have experienced a narcissist in your relationship or in your background. It is very common. It's a lot more common than people would realize. Um, a lot of the people that come into my clinic have somehow been hurt or been affected by someone else's narcissistic behavior or someone who is narcissistic. So if you feel this is something that you've experienced, there's a lot of different resources on the internet. I will make some more videos. So do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get a notification when I publish some more videos. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, may you be safe, may you be happy, namaste.